I'm Van. I'm sorry. That's Booby. Why did you introduce Blue Booby when we have Blake here? I don't know. Priority over Blake. <laughs> it's just a force of habit. Okay. Well, today we have an interesting treat for you. We have a collab. A collab. Yeah, with Blake. Blake with your dad. About yourself. It's not your dad. Blake's not your dad. <laughs> so Blake, I'm Blake X. Like, and prove it. Another... Oh, go ahead. Go, go. Just go, go, go. I'm Blake X, and this is not another nuclear reaction. This is a special collab with Vin and Story. And if you want to check out my channel, Nuclear Reactions, it's genuine content from a metalhead and lover of music who really does a full analysis, personal stories. You get a full experience in addition to the reaction. Um, there's a wonderful community developing around the channel. I'm really excited to be a part of it. Really loving the evolution that sh the channel is going in, and it was inspired by Vin and Story. The, so, and he's growing pretty fast, so that means content must be good. Yeah, the man's already at 3K. He just started when? Blake, March? March 12th. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I've, I've got a particular friend of mine who's been grinding since before you or I, Blake. And uh, he's he's not where you are. So. No. Well, you know hey. what? I got my work ethic from you guys. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, we were talking about that off camera, like, People think it's easy. It's oh god. It's, it's easy not. to do one or two videos yep. a week, but to do a video every day, or two and you know, it takes patience too, because different things happen. Sometimes there's noise outside. Sometimes yes. you need internet. All these yes. little problems, you got to work around them. You got to. Yeah. Blake, so, we sometimes have five you go to kids. record something and it's not even recorded, so then you have to re-record <laughs> the entire segment over again. It's true. These you things. Yeah, can be like some B-side footage for people to see. Uh, <laughs> that would have been, been worth it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so today we are Gershock got Blake and got us together so that way we can do this reaction with you. This is our first time hearing it. It's pretty fresh for him too because he hasn't heard it in a while. So yeah, I think this should be interesting. Yeah. Um... I feel like that, I'm not sure, but I feel like X was up to something on this one because I feel like he wants some tension. I'm not sure. Yeah. Because I just, I was getting well, that vibe. Well, so. he said, as, well, well, wait a second, Blake, you're, you're a Satanist, right? Yes. So Blake's a Satanist. We're two Christians. Okay. And then now we're listening to the song. So okay. I believe Gert X has some, speaking of X, before we start the song. Get their merch. <laughs> well, it's by, by the shirt. By the shirt. That's what you're saying. I need to do that too. You got it. <laughs> but you can do the boring thing and listen to this song from the Vin and Sori channel. But oh, if you right. do the smart thing, and get off of our channel and go to Blake's channel, Nuclear Reactions, there's also a post video uh, interview with the actual band, uh, the, the lead singer of the band. Yep. So don't be dumb, leave our channel and go to Blake's channel, subscribe yep. to Blake's channel. You're gonna channel. see all this, but more. Shadokt. And then, uh, you know, you subscribe to Blake's channel. First link in the description is gonna be uh, Blake's channel. So. You don't have to unsubscribe to us there, listener. No. But you do have yes, to villagers and nuclear family, they have to be neighbors. So right. stay yeah. with both of us. <laughs> right. There's a village, and then there's a nuclear family outside of the village, which protects the village because yes. we're pacifists. Right. <laughs> it's a nuclear, or as Bush would say, nuclear. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you think this is? A game by Gersha. And go. go.
you think this is? Okay. That guitar, Scotty <laughs> screams, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, their 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 stuff is uh really catchy when they yes, do, it is. When they they definitely know how to write a chorus. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. That's gonna yeah. be in my head all day. That song packed a lot of energy, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> their vocals work good together, I think. Yeah, you know this. I think this is actually oh, the first time I've seen the music video. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I don't think I've seen the music video. No. I definitely got to go to one of these guys' that shows live. All right. Oh, I know. That'd be great. All right, Blake. What did you think the uh, – I, I saw a couple of nuclear nuclear bombs going off. I was like, yeah, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Nuclear Reaction. Don't, don't, mess, with the, uh, don't mess with the village. We got a nuclear, uh, a nuclear yeah. thing out there. Vectors. Okay. Okay, so what did you think the song was about? So what it felt like to me was I think this is really about – Gershaw kind of taking a look at the social and political climate that currently exists, where there's all this division among people. And those people are being exploited on a mass scale by the people in power. But instead of uniting to stop that, what we're seeing is like this political polarization of society. And, you know, with hate and violence kind of being the driving forces behind that. And meanwhile, you've got these people who are in their ivory towers and who profit from exploiting this division. And it's almost like a game for them. You know, and, and I remember watching one of your reactions for um, Make America Hate Again. And yeah. I mean, if that song didn't drive home the message, then the, the video clips and it absolutely did. And, you know, I also heard that new Tool song that I reacted to, Fear Inoculum. And it seems like a lot of bands lately are tackling this exact subject of divisiveness in the country. Mm -hmm. So clearly it's become so prevalent and it's upset people so much that this is a very popular subject matter now in the year 2019 for mm -hmm. bands to tackle. And Gershock is another example of that. And, you know, like you said, I think they do have a little bit of an element of sarcasm, you know, running through the, the song. And I think that's kind of done to kind of illustrate the ridiculousness of the mentality that some people have, you know? Um, yeah, it, it seems to be uh, going after the Trump voters in particular, though, I yeah. gotta say. He's, he's isolating the Trump voters. Who gave churches a voice? Who gave bigots jobs? Yeah. Who gave chauvinists a fighting chance at all? I mean, that, that's, that's obviously yeah. he's going after Trump. I'm mm -hmm. an outcast in my own country, but I'd rather kill you than share it. And I justify it by dehumanizing you, scum. 
because we're not like at all, which, which, you know, I've constantly, I've had this conversation, particularly with Christians, about right. using the term illegals to, mm -hmm. to yeah. describe a whole group of people with this dehumanizing language. Yeah. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Well, like, it's like once you oh, get people to like, once you get people to view another set of human beings as not being human, or once you get, once you get people to think about them in that way by hearing that kind of rhetoric and that kind of language, that puts into place the kind of momentum to, you know, subjugate those people. You know? Absolutely. Right. Now, uh, I'm going to say things to, to make sure that we disagree so that we can illustrate the, the point of the song in the first place. If you didn't, uh, you wouldn't be Vin. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I wouldn't be Vin. So, so no. true. Uh, but so like the whole Fourth Reich stuff, you know, which is, you know, he said, welcome to the Fourth Reich down here, where he talks about, we'll never apologize confronting your hypocrisy. If you won't listen now, you won't be prepared to act until it's already far too late. Welcome to the Fourth Reich. Like, I, I think the, the idea that Trump is a Nazi or that people who support Trump are Nazis uh, is just historically a factual. Yeah. There's, there, the, the, the Nazis, what they were doing, there are similarities, for sure, mm -hmm. but there are also pretty significant differences. And I think it's irresponsible to use that type of language to describe the Trump presidency. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, actually, I'm waiting to hear a little bit more. I want to hear what his take is on that. Um, well, one thing I will say is I think that people use the term Nazi way too much. Like they use it in some ways, some people use it to label anyone that they disagree with as a Nazi, you know, and, and they would have yeah. them think there's a Nazi hiding around any, every corner, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> living right, right, right. as a Nazi, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's not that cut and dry, you know, it's, it's the, the issue is much more multifaceted than that. And I, yeah, I do believe there are many people, some in power, some not who are fascists and who would love to implement that kind of thing. But I don't think it's Nazism in the same way that it was in Germany in the, you know, in the forties. And do you, do you think, do you think that Trump is a Nazi? I don't think he's a Nazi, you know. I think he's, the color that Trump cares about is green, you know, in my opinion. <laughs> That's what you always say too, basically. You know, he's yeah. gonna do whatever it takes to, you know, put himself out there, keep himself in power. And, you know, it's me, me, me with Trump. It's, it's narcissistic and, that's how I feel. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, he, he does make statements that have an, uh, a cumulative effect on people and on society. Like when he gets up there and he says things like, oh, they're bringing in drugs or bringing in rapists, um, you know, they're all bad hombres. That's something, whether intentional or not, and it may be because I happen to think he is more intelligent than people think and he knows what he's doing to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But it has a, an effect on society and, and people consume this primarily through the media, whether it's social media or the news media. And it has an effect on people who are impressionable and they take it and they run with it. And then all of a sudden you start getting all these shootings, you know? So it, he's not a Nazi, but at the same time, what he's saying and a lot of what he's doing is very dangerous, you know, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I think that, no, I don't think that he's a Nazi. Um, but I would agree that a lot of what he says, it's, it seems to, you know, make people feel that this kind of bigotry is okay or, um, the, the way that they talk and they are, are acting out and it doesn't, you know, right from the beginning of his campaign when he was saying, I will pay for your bills if you attack. So, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. already was starting it out in a, in such a way that he was okay with violence with people that didn't agree. So I think that, yeah, it's, and it seems to me there's way more violence in that type of an area now than there ever has been what type yeah. of it? as far as groups coming against each other like you're you know somebody's wearing a make america great hat again and then people like attack them like were people attacking obama supporters were people you know what i mean like this seems to be really like well, that's because people are really yeah but i i can't blame that on trump you have to say that that's leftists not being able to accept the fact that they lost and reacting violently to it well here's the thing like i think there's I think it's on both sides, you know, and that's why yes. I like that name, Middle America, the you know, for your firesides, because I think it's on both sides, and I think both sides are hypocritical to a certain degree. You know, it's on one hand, yes, you do have people in MAGA hats who are beating the crap out of people um, that they, you know, they don't like, but on the other hand, you also have Antifa people going in with baseball bats and beating the crap out of people they don't like. And well, me, where, violence, you know, where, where, where are the news clips of the people being assaulted for wearing Obama shirts during the Obama administration? 
Yeah, I'm saying it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Then you'd have to say that folks in the right, even though they didn't like Obama, accepted it. They didn't like fit. You, you were not in mortal danger if you rocked uh, a, an Obama shirt and you walked through the wrong neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But if you're rocking a MAGA hat, They've they've made you know Ray's Atslan made an equivalency between a MAGA hat and a KKK hood, mm -hmm. you know, and so then it, it then when you combine that with the whole punch a Nazi ideology, then you know it's it's uh yeah. But so like the first the first verse was kind of ironic to me considering literally the debate that we just posted about two hours ago is about Christians and guns and killing people, mm. and it's now it's time to sit up on the throne as I read the words of God with a rifle in my hand. My words are law. And those of you accused, come by your place in heaven or be sent back to hell. Like, you know, like the, 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 the combination of the church, the government, and money, and how that gets corrupted, like the message of, I would say, Christianity probably, because he does mention the church later on. Right. But when the church gets in bed with the government, and then you put money in the middle of it, it's, it's literally 100% of the time in history we've seen it, the church always gets corrupted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like somebody said to me one time, it was a really, really cool, he was dropping some wisdom on me. He said, look, man, when you, when you dip a white glove into a, a puddle of mud, the glove gets muddy. The mud doesn't get glovey. <laughs> and, so, and so when the church dips itself into, you know, American politics and American money, then we're going to, the, the church is going to get worldly. The world mm -hmm. is not going to get churchy. And you have to say that it's been right-wing Christians who are responsible <laughs> for, for Trump to some degree. Like, because yeah. he would not have won without the evangelical yeah. vote. Yeah. And so now you have, you know, if you go down, it says, you know, who cares if all of us are broke or whatever. Like, you know, you it's weird, like evangelical Christians who are supposed to be uh, compassionate and care about everybody mm -hmm. now have this very callous, like, hey, you should have been more personally responsible. Too bad if you died of insulin, you know, you didn't have enough money for insulin That's or whatever. Um, yeah, and it's this fear of, you know, I think he's talking here about, do you fear what you don't understand? You can yeah. hate us all you want. I think that has to do with the whole immigration discussion. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and you know what's been strange to me is, like you said, Blake, when Trump came down the escalator, he immediately started talking about how terrible the immigrants were. Mm -hmm. And it was this message of fear. And you always hear about MS-13 and things like that. So then when you say, okay, so you are afraid, you know, yeah. when you use the term xenophobia, so you yeah. are afraid of other people. They go, oh, no, that's ridiculous. Da, da, da. It's like, you ran on that. That's yes. what you ran on. Yes. You ran on yes. fear of the other. It's well, you know, so Go ahead, but but. This, I think with this divisiveness, I think that so many people are talking about hate speech, hate speech, hate, hate speech. They're talking about stopping hate. But right. I don't think that it's all premeditated hate. I think a lot of it is fear. fear right. Oh, yeah. You know? right. So I think they're addressing the wrong emotion in many cases. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, yeah. Like, like, I think the term homophobic gets used too much as far as like, no, like on a technical level, nobody's scared of gay people that I know yeah. of. Anyway. Yeah, that more or less is hatred, yeah. But yeah. xenophobia is real mm -hmm. and right. that is what he ran on mm -hmm. in regard to the border because he couldn't run on screw those little kids he's not going to say that but it but he's going to talk about ms-13 and yeah. he's going to talk about drug traffickers and da da da, da. Right. and it was a fear-based border policy mm -hmm. and even you know you can see the middle america debates i have and i'm not i'm not mad at anybody for for being afraid like i'm just saying when it gets called xenophobia and you roll your eyes, it's just weird to me because all your arguments are fair-based arguments. Yes. So just own the fact that you're afraid of these people. That's all, that's all, uh, that's all I'm saying is like, okay, you're afraid of these people. What's the best way to handle that fear? But when right-wingers just sarcastically roll their eyes and go, oh, everything's a phobia. No, not everything's a phobia, but you're absolutely afraid of these people. That's obvious. Yeah. Like, am I, am, I, am I missing something here? No, I think that's on point, you know, and I'm sure the, the, that line here that says, uh, welcome to the Fourth Reich, I'm sure that's alluding to the situation with immigrants and with refugees. Now, you know, I know that the, the, the detention centers, right, where they have all these kids and stuff like that, that's yeah. been called, you know, concentration camps, and I don't think that's the case. I think that's hyperbolic language, you know. 
Um, but I do think it's a slippery slope and it sets a very dangerous precedent when you dehumanize people to the point where you have them in cages and the status quo has become that we're more or less okay with it. You know, sure. There's a lot of outrage on social media and stuff like that, but it's like, it's weird in a way that how it's been like accepted, you know? Well, yeah, Britannica, I actually, I actually looked up the term concentration camp on Britannica yeah. and, uh, I had to look at the date that it was published because yeah, I know. <laughs> it addressed it addressed the issue head on. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read it if I can if I can find it. We'll probably put the uh clip in here. Okay. Um but it was it was very ironic when I read the definition of of the term concentration camp because I was like, yo, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. <sighs> So let me read the definition here if I can find it. It's a, a concentration camp or internment center for political prisoners and members of national or minority groups who are confined for reasons of state security, exploitation, or punishment, usually by ex executive order or military decree, right? And then it goes on to say, it says um, right here, Concentration camps are to be distinguished from prisons interning persons lawfully convicted of civil crimes and from prisoner of war camps in which captured military personnel are held under the laws of war. They are also to be distinguished from refugee camps or detention and relocation centers for the temporary accommodation of large numbers of displaced persons. Right. So Britannica, this was written, okay, it was updated August 29th, 22nd. Uh, okay. Okay. Because <laughs> it's sense. like, it, it's like, so Britannica is saying, okay, look, guys, that's not what a, that's not what a concentration camp is. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Um, actually, no, that line right there was not added. That was up since 2013, that, that, that um, definition. So that was up since 2013, babe. So okay. my point is, they're not concentration camps. Right. They're not. Right. Unless you know more about what they are than Encyclopedia Britannica, they're not concentration camps. Right. But you're using language like that in order to get people all emotionally riled up and all the rest of it. And meanwhile, uh, well, that's part of it too. Like now more than ever, I see so many people acting upon their emotions rather than acting upon logic. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just strange to me. You know? And we use so much hyperbolic language. And we use so much embellishment and exaggeration when we re refer to things now for political reasons. And that to me is like very dangerous. Yeah, it, it happens. On, well, it, we saw it happened on the the um, the right wing, mm -hmm. where where Trump Trump called. Well, we saw it on the left wing. We were talking about you know concentration camp, but we saw it on the right wing when Trump referred to these people as invaders. Mm -hmm. Right. You know the migrant caravan because we had the uh, midterm elections coming up. And what's amazing to me is like none of the right wingers saw through it. It's like invaders, invaders, invaders. And then right after the midterm elections were over, literally he stopped that talking. Language went out the window. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. literally like we went on to the next thing. It's like yeah. un it's insane in this country, like where yeah. people are and yeah. how irrational we are. But that's why, you know when it says, What do you think this is a game? I really feel like running for office was a game to Trump. I know. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's like, just like starring in a reality show, you know, it's just another thing to try, you know, well, another he, profitable thing to put him in, you know, in the spotlight. He explicitly he, said it. He said it when he was talking about, we shot a, a video on Middle America where he was talking about being he presidential. Be he could be the yeah. best, yeah. yeah. And he was talking about how it would bore people to death. Yes. And so he was looking, he was looking at, uh, at the presidency, uh, he felt that one of the jobs of the president was to not bore people to death and to be entertaining. Like the whole thing is an absolute game to this dude, and it's well, it's the unbelievable. Situation isn't boring, but I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it entertaining though. <laughs> well, okay, so here's what I will say about it being entertaining. Any any time you do, a, I did a video on the death penalty, right? Mm -hmm. And I. You know, we did some research on it. We looked at it historically and all that. We spent about 45 minutes on it. Very important. Probably the most important Middle America video oh, that we've funny, yeah. produced. It got like 400 views. Yeah. <laughs> and then we put up Trump being presidential. Yeah, like a yeah. thousand. Like, like it's, it's like <laughs> Trump. One of the effects of Trump is that he has kind of, he's created that expectation now that your president is going to be purposely entertaining mm -hmm. right right you, you know like during the bush administration yeah. it was like he was entertaining but he wasn't on purpose you know what yeah. i mean like yeah yeah he was entertaining on accident but now this is like an intentional showman you know like yeah it's pretty crazy um i, I think 
you know, X was was assuming that we were going to have a lot of disagreements about this, but you know, I, <laughs> I, I think we're kind I, of on the same page, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of uh, uh, pity for the church when the church gets called out for yeah. how we've conducted mm -hmm. ourselves yeah. in the political milieu because. Uh, you know, if you look at the book of Revelation, you know, you've got this woman that's riding this beast. And many, many commentators, including us, believe that that's what happens when God's people get in line, you know, align themselves with the government. Right. Um, it is the same thing with the rifle. Like, uh, you know, I don't believe that Christians should be these Second Amendment my guns, my rights, blah, blah, blah. Somebody comes into my house, I'm sending them to God. Like all this craziness, like that's not a Christian ethic mm -hmm. at all. Well, it's uh, interesting I, to me because like the rifle, you know, that becomes like the symbol of like a new religion in a way with America yeah. as the object of worship, you know? One, so I see people calling themselves Christians, but really they're worshiping America. They act like America is somehow inherently divine. You yeah. Know, it's the, the chosen for certain people, you know? Yeah. Well, it's well, yeah. it's literally like the American except I, I was just in a debate and you guys can see it on the middle America channel where I was saying I was saying, OK, so Christians all over the world are getting martyred and not fighting back. But then in America, it's different. Yeah. In America, we got our we, we got a 30 30. Pow, pow, pow. Mm -hmm. But but uh, but right, all the way to replay the grass. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But all the other Christians all over the world, they're supposed to be martyred and we're going to have conferences for them and all that shit. But yeah. when it's time for us to pony up, nah, fam, you are coming to this house. We got a 30-30 here. Yeah. It's insane. Uh, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Like, I, I just feel like Christianity has kind of lost its way. Yeah, I, uh, I totally agree. In, in a, and we've lost it because we've, we've been dipping our hands into politics, you know, mm -hmm. since right. Billy Graham and all that. So <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, the separation between church and state is kind of like one of the things that you know jesus jesus was like the real the first person to do that when mm -hmm. the whole who's whose coin is yep. this and he says render to caesar what's what caesar and give to god what's god's that's a separation between church and state yep. right and we're not supposed to be in bed with them especially as regards to money right uh, uh, and i'll even say this like the whole 501c3 thing i think if the church cannot demonstrate that you know at least 70 percent of their income is going toward the local community to charities that they should lose their tax tax exempt status because mm -hmm. the entire reason i agree the entire reason that we were given tax exempt status was the it's assumption because. was you're going to take that capital and then make yeah. the community better yeah right. so we we were involved with a group and and Nobody took a salary. No. Nobody took a single. As a matter of fact, the leader of that of that church was the one that spent the most money on yeah. everybody. Yeah. And, and one hundred percent of the, yeah. the money that came in went back into the community. Right. Well, also like the, that's what yeah. that's another thing. Like the community is supposed to be everyone. Like everyone should be part of the community. So like like I was just thinking about that incident. I don't know if you guys heard about it. Where the YMCA, which is also a tax exempt institution, yeah. They uh, Nergal from Behemoth was went to work out at a YMCA. And they kicked him out because he wasn't a Christian. No. Yeah. So it's like, it's like what? The community. Yeah, yeah, it's a true story. What? True story. Yeah. Yeah. Like wow. so, yeah, that stuff like true. that. It's like, okay, yeah. that's fine. That's your religious freedom. That's fine. You just you're you you do not have a tax exempt status. Yeah. And it's the same thing. With, agree on that. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing with the money. Like, it's one thing. Like, if, if there's a church and I see 78% of that capital is going back to the community, and then the other 20% so the pastor can counsel people all of his, mm -hmm. you know, every day. I'm cool with that. Fine. Mm -hmm. Don't tax those people. Right. Like, don't, I mean, these people are pooling their resources so that they can help their surrounding community. I don't want the government benefiting from that at all. No, I agree. Yeah. But if you're taking all that money to buy yourself a jet or yeah. buy yourself another gun, get the fuck out of here. Pay your taxes just like everybody else. See, <laughs> how you're going to hoard the money yeah. yeah. and the government has to come in and take it so that they can help so we can get Medicare for all. How's Did that? Did somebody say uh, mega church? <laughs> well, I mean, look, if a guy writes a book and he becomes a millionaire because he writes a book, fine. But yeah. don't take any money from the congregation mm -hmm. then. Right. Yeah. I don't have a problem with you being a millionaire. Just don't take anything from the congregation. Take all right. that money right. and recycle it back into your area. There right. is a specific, I used to drive, literally when I was in I Houston know. on assignment, I used to drive by this guy's stadium yeah. every, and I'm not mad at him. I'm just saying, like, if you're already that rich, how do you still have tax exempt status for your church if, yeah. 
a hundred percent of your capital is not yeah. is not going back out to the community. I think that that's crazy. It's unbelievable to me. I love how everyone always talks about corporations not paying their fair share of taxes, and that's Correct. to a certain degree a legitimate argument. But no one talks about the church not paying their fair share of taxes. You know. Yeah. If you're a mega church, and you know, 70 is kind of an arbitrary number, but I don't think there's an atheist or a Satanist on the planet that would say, look, this group is giving 70% of their capital, the other 30 goes to maintain this guy's family. I don't think anybody would say no. Yeah. But what people are upset about is you're you're hoarding this money, you're not recycling it back to the community, and then on top of that, you're using your power to speak against other people who are not in a, as good of a financial situation. So you're hearing all these sermons. I just saw a pretty influential guy in, in certain subcultures in Christianity post that if a person ha is a socialist, and by socialist, what he means are like people like us who want Medicare for everyone and all that, mm -hmm. that you should excommunicate that from your what? church. What? So, so, so not only are you you tax exempt and you're, you're hoarding all this money, but not only are you using the bully pulpit to, That's to crazy. strip what I believe, I haven't talked to everybody about this, but I think healthcare is a human right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you're using your bully pulpit to strip people of that right. But then on top of that, you also want to get people who do care about their neighbor excommunicated from your church. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Pay your fucking tax. You know what's so interesting? is yeah. the only thing that the New Testament ever says about taxes is to pay them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true. You, it's amazing how, how blatant the hypocrisy is, you know? But it's yeah. also saddening to me, like, how easily people in general are kind of socially engineered and manipulated by this. You know, I, I would think that after this happening repeatedly, for, you know, repeatedly through centuries, we would finally get it, but apparently not. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, the, the church stuff, you know, I don't necessarily have a problem. I don't necessarily have a problem with calling out the church and the, the tax exempt stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it's, it, it's like I said, the only thing the New Testament says about the taxes is that you're supposed to pay them. That's all it yeah. says. That there was no expectation in the New Testament that you would get a tax exempt status church. Right. That's just something that the government said, Hey, it'd be in our best interest not to tax these people because they're pooling all their resources to help their local community. And mm -hmm. I would, I say, well, as long as, as long as that's true for the majority of your capital, then I think the majority of people in America would support your, your continued tax exempt status. And I also think that the majority of America would support if you're not doing that, then you pick, because then you're no longer a church or a corporation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you're not pooling the resources to help the surrounding community, then you're just another corporation who provides yeah, spiritual, business, you know? spiritual whatever yeah. and stuff for kids and whatever, your business. And, and that's great. We love your business, but pay your taxes like every other business is supposed to. Yeah. Good Lord. But you know what they'll do? They'll use that political power to put people in office who are going to continue yeah. to give them not only tax and debt stats, but also grants and extra money. It's evil. It's, yeah. it's evil and it's completely un-New Testament. The church in America would be unfreaking recognizable to the, to the New Testament Christians. Mm -hmm. yeah. they'd, be like, they'd be like, yo, what's with all these guns? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's amazing to me how easily people are manipulated, you know? But, but at the same time, this is one of the most, this is one of the oldest strategies in the book, you know? 100%. It's a strategy of divide and conquer. And if it's true that the power lies with the people, then the way you implement that is by sp splitting those, you know, concentrations of power into pieces and setting them at odds with one another, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like pieces on a chessboard, which is why I think the song title here is such a good name. You know, what do you think this is a game? That's how they play it. Yeah. And I, I really think that Trump really looks at a lot of this as just a game. And I think for him, it's personal mm -hmm. when he goes after these people, it's personal. He, yeah. and it doesn't, he, I don't even think he necessarily has a, it's just like, when I play basketball or when I play Madden, like I love Chris Cole. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with Chris Cole, but when me and him are playing Madden, like it's like we're like enemies or yeah, something like that. You turn it right up. <laughs> I turn it right up because I'm, I'm competitive. I want to crush mm -hmm. my opponent. But with Trump, like I don't think he has a personal issue with any of these mm -hmm. people, but yeah. he's looking at them as opponents and it's a game to him because he's a bill, he's a plutocrat. He's, a, he's up there yeah. and he, he has no idea what he's doing on the ground. Right. You know what else it is? I was watching this video that, you know, dealt with this issue. 
And they said something that I really found to be on point. They said that a lot of these politicians, they look at people with like the same cold indifference that we feel when we look at our bank accounts. And that's because to them, people are a currency. You know? 100%. Be manipulated to get what they want. And, you know, yeah. the refugee crisis is an example of that. 100%. People mm. being moved around on the board and exchanged, you know. Ugh. Yeah. Like you said, dehumanization, you know. Yeah. And then the people on the ground have to pay the price yeah. because these dudes are playing chess with people's lives. I remember Jeez. when I was in middle school and they talked about how the Europeans, they just put up a map and they said, okay, this is mine, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours, and let's go forth to conquer. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, y'all, I was like, what is wrong with y'all? <laughs> Europeans. Of course, my white teacher didn't like that very much, but I had the whole, you know. Uh, Pan African thing going on. I'm like, you guys are disagreeable to live with in peace. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Farrakhan. Okay, uh, what do you give the song? Uh, so, with my rating system, I call it the Doomsday Clock. I usually do like one through 12. So, I'll give this one in 11. Very strong song. One of my favorite Gershock songs, actually. What about you? Mm, like 8.9. How come? What happened? Um, I just wasn't. I don't know. I mean, that's still a higher score. That's not a five. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> this is this is absolutely a 10 for me because it was written kind of tongue in cheek. Yeah. But you know that you're mega talented when you could say some really heavy shit sarcastically. Right. Mm -hmm. And I have a terrible feeling that if we put this in a time capsule, Blake, and opened this up in 10 years and did a review, that it would be more relevant. Ooh. Yes. It'd yeah. be more relevant a decade later than it is now, Hopefully which is not, pretty but... crazy. And what I love about this is that it was not preachy. You know, it didn't lecture to you. It just laid out the situation as it is, you know, and like you said, sarcastic. So it was a nice way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the guy's, the guy's watching the, the video and he's trying to plug the TV out and the thing yeah. is playing and all that. Mm -hmm. And he's upset, um, which kind of, it's funny, but at the same time, it speaks to the fact that people are, are trying to hide from the reality of what's going on in our country mm -hmm. and it's impossible to do so. Like Absolutely. you are going to have to deal with it. Period. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought it. Was, I thought it was a ten. Fashal, I think you're crazy. Um, but you know, we love you anyway. <laughs> All right, there you go. Remember to check out Nuclear Reactions because there's a post uh, review interview, so you can see how close or far away we are. Vin out. Sorry out. Blake out. Gone. <laughs>